Hello everyone, welcome to January Monthly Card Club. So my name is Lauren Urbonis, for those of you who may not have met me in person, and I am delighted to be crafting with you. So this video is for those of you who were not able to make it out in person to my monthly card club, which I host on the second Tuesday and second Wednesday of the month. I am currently filming on that second Tuesday, and I just got back from walking Ara. I don't know if you can tell, but it is a blustery day out there and I'm a little chilly. So I have my tea all ready to go and I might just sit here holding it for a little bit because it's cold, um, but that's okay. Now I'm back inside and we can craft together. The other way that you might be getting this video link is if you have purchased from my website. So my website is at the bottom of this page, laurenurbonus.stampinup.net, and you may have placed a random order or you might have accidentally ordered from me. I've never had that happen yet. Um, but I send out a little thank you to everyone who orders over $35, and that is this free monthly card clip kit. Uh, if you place an order and it's over $100, I also give you a little product treat. And if it's over $200, you're going to be prompted to select some hostess rewards, which are at least $20 worth of free product. So keep that in mind. And if you're somebody who's part of my regular monthly card club, I do give you those benefits as well. Um, you just send me your orders and you save on some shipping because I place them together with other people here in Edmonton and we can uh, kind of take advantage of just one big box instead of everyone needing little ones. So let's get on to what's new and exciting this January. And then I will show you the projects that I have sent you if they were being mailed to you, just a reminder that they do get mailed only two days before the live class. Um, and so probably they're not in your hands yet, but you can just watch this video whenever you have them. And uh, you can watch basically up until I start the projects for any announcements right now too. So the biggest thing that's going on right now is the start of our new mini catalog and our celebration promotion. So I do want to go over those briefly just for anybody who is not familiar with um, our upcoming events. So I'm going to start with the mini catalog and this is a beautiful selection of new products. There's paper stamps, uh, embossing folders, dies. This catalog is available from January 4th through to the end of April. Of course, once we hit April, there are kind of a while supplies left caveat. So you might wanna start with the things that you love the most and then work on from there. And just keep in mind that if you're going online and you're trying to find something and you're like, oh no, I would like this stamp set, this beautiful notes of nature bundle and the website says it's currently unavailable, that simply means that they're getting a new stock in. So you can either message me and I will keep an eye on when that comes in to stock for you again and let you know, or you just check back in again. Okay, so don't worry, it hasn't run out. They just need another supply of it because sometimes things are popular and they disappear. One thing I think probably will be popular, there is a really cute little cow. Where is he? I don't have this catalog memorized yet. There's a fun little cow punch and I feel like that's gonna be popular and probably here it is. Cutest cow, isn't he so fun? There is a stamp set too on page 53. Oh, I was close, there we go. See, that's one that I'm predicting will probably be popular because he's adorable and uh, I would like to play with him soon, but we're not playing with him this month because I need to focus on the celebration stuff, because we only have two months for those goodies. So take a peek at this catalog. There's lots of good stuff in there. And if you do not have a copy yet, and you don't have a demonstrator, or you are not a demonstrator, let me know. I'm more than happy to mail you a set if you're in Canada, or you also can come pick them up from my porch, and uh, there's a little wish list, fun little tag thing in there for you. So moving on to celebration, you've heard me mention this before, and it is my favorite time of the year with Stampin' Up! because I do not need to spend $200 to get a freebie from Stampin' Up!, which usually when you spend $200, you get something like $20 to spend. But during celebration, 
January and February, there are items in this catalog that you can earn for free for every 60 and every $120 that you spent. So I am going to show you a couple features of this brochure and this catalog. And again, if you don't have one, let me know. We'll get you hooked up. So make sure to browse the pages and get lots of fun ideas. But I want to point out for you this little icon here. So you're going to look for this icon and it tells you whether this item is a free item with a $60 purchase or a 120. And I'll just let you know the things that are in the front are 60, in the back are 120. And also just keep in mind that some of these items like this watercolor melon stamp, for instance, it does coordinate with products from the main catalog. So if you're looking for something to perhaps cut out your watermelons, Stamping Up has said it coordinates with the Modern Oval Punch, which means the Modern Oval Punch fits that large watermelon perfectly. Or of course you can just chop it in half and get the half rind as well. So I'm not gonna highlight everything in here, but I do want you to just kind of read those coordinates with little bubbles because they do coordinate with certain bundles and punches in our catalog. The paper, for instance, from Sunny Days, you would cut out this, the clouds with the dies. You can't buy this paper on its own. And so it's something meant to complement a bundle in the catalog, but yet you can only earn it as a free item. So perhaps you'd buy the Sunny Days bundle and then earn that paper for free. Okay, lots and lots of good stuff in here, and I am going to use some of it on today's products projects, so you'll see it. We've got flight and airy designer paper we're using on one of our projects today. There's some pool party ribbon, which is gorgeous and so fun. If somebody's having a baby, there's a little stamp set for that. We've got the softly stippled paper, which coordinates with the stippled roses bundle. So that's why you see all these samples. They're showing the roses. So that's the bundle it coordinates with. There are some gems hiding in here. I know you kind of have to watch for these icons and then find what they point to. And then I wanted to point out this paper here. So this is a specialty paper, which is usually in our catalogs worth $21 plus shipping and GST. So you are spending 60 and you're earning that paper, which is nice and shiny, and um, we're gonna use that next month. You're getting that for free. So that's more than a third of the value that you're spending to earn that. And just keep in mind, these $60 purchases do need to be before shipping and tax. So you can't, um, you can't have like a $54 I order and then you're like, oh, the shipping is this much and GST is that much. It has to be 60 and then you pay shipping and GST on top. So I'll be honest about that, but it's still a great deal. Like all of this stuff is free, free, free. Great stamp set with some nice sentiments, coordinates with one of our new punches. We've got some trusty tools paper, which coordinates with a new bundle in the catalog. I'm going fast because I know you're going to want to just look at this yourself. We have a Jungle Pell stamp set, and that is free with a $60 purchase. But then you can get dies for it that are free with a $120. So you are spending $180, but you're getting an entire free bundle. And bundles usually range from about... 59 to like 75 now and so you're getting a really good deal just by placing those orders together and then of course because if you're at the 120 who are, or 180 who are we kidding we're gonna bump it up and spend 200 because you're spending $20 but then once you hit 200 you're gonna get $20 free so you're kind of evening out there and uh, that's a lot of free stuff. So keep that in mind. If you have a wish list and you're like, hey, Lauren, I don't really know how to get the most for my money or this is what I'm interested in, message me. I'm more than happy to help brainstorm and give you a couple options. Okay, last page of 120 items. We've got a stamp and an embossing folder. You get both together or you get this large dogwood um, stamp set. Now I did mention for those of you who end up with giant wish lists and you're like oh I want everything under the sun because it's all beautiful 
And keep in mind, those $60 purchases can be from the mini or the annual catalog or the online exclusives, whatever you're purchasing, doesn't matter. So let's say you've got a giant wish list. This is the time of year where I like to talk to you guys about joining my Stamping Up team. So it is a no obligation starter kit, which means basically if you decide like, yes, I'm gonna take advantage of this offer that you're giving me, and then you get your kit and life changes or things don't work out, and you're like, I don't really wanna order anything else. There's no penalties. You don't have to pay back um, the freebies that you're gonna receive. You don't have to um, pay back any like bonuses or anything. But the perks of joining are, let me start here. When you sign up with our regular starter kit, you're going to pay 135. That starter kit is no shipping, no GST cost. So it's 135 flat and you pick 165 worth of product. So that's $30 in free product already. Now during celebration, Stampin' Up! likes to sweeten the deal. So they have given us two options to choose from. So I know these are kind of tricky to see, but if you go to my Facebook page, there's a nice like vibrant photo of this glass mat that they're talking about here in option number one. So you have two choices to add on to your starter kit absolutely free during celebration. Option one is you get this Stampin' Glass Mat Studio, which includes a large glass mat that you can stamp on. It's easy to wipe off, comes with a little chamois and a tray for you to do some of those specialty techniques. Now there is also videos that I can send you that uh, kind of show you how to get the most use out of this. And it is valued at $82. So that is a really, really good freebie. If you're like, no, I, I don't really want that. I don't need that. You also have the option of purchasing, well, choosing 41 more dollars of free product. So that's option two, where you choose 41 free credits, plus of course, all of the goodies that you're getting from this initial starter kit makes for a really, really good deal. So that is an option that I really offer to anyone who's showing me a wish list, kind of even over a hundred dollars, because who are we kidding? You probably have more items that you just chose not to put on it. So while you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you will be part of my team. So you get access to monthly team meetings, which those of you who are watching and you're part of my team, we have not been having fun with technology. So don't worry, I have um, one of the projects that we did last night at our team meeting here tonight for you to see in person. Because Facebook Live and me have not been having fun. That's a side note. Usually our team meetings are great. I give you a mystery project. We celebrate the people who have had the top sales from the month before. We celebrate accomplishments and you get access to coming to Stamping Up's events. So you can go to their live events. There is one in Houston, for instance, in March that you could still sign up for up until the end of January. You can come to their online events, which they host and um, they are really, really fun and inspirational. There is a 20% discount on all of the products that you purchase on your demonstrator account while you're active. And if you signed up this month, you'd be active for about six months. So you would get to see sneak peeks and have a uh, advance chance to purchase from the new annual catalog. So demonstrators get to buy about a month in advance from select items. We don't get to buy everything um, in the new catalogs, but we do get to buy some things and I really like that perk. So those are a few options. If you want to know more, please chat with me. You can also go to my website and if you just click join at the top, all of what I've read to you and talked about is kind of there for you to mull over again. But I would love to have you. This is the time of year that often people do join because you get those freebies and you might as well just take them. You don't get celebration items for this starter kit. I've had that question too um, because you're already getting other free product. So it's kind of an either or. Either you get the celebration or you get the goodies in the sign up starter kit. But if you order after you've signed up, 
you know, you get your email, you log in, make an account, place an order, you're getting 20% off that order, plus you get celebration items on that. And let's say you're like, nope, not interested, Lauren. I just don't need one more thing on my plate or to think about, but I do have a giant order or I have a few friends who we wanna to get together and order together. What they have during celebration is when an order reaches $375, there is a bonus $37.50 in hostess credits automatically added. So usually we'd earn about $37.50, but they're doubling that. And so those hostess credits are now doubled. You'd earn a whole lot of stuff. So if you have a giant wish list or you and a few friends are going together on something, again, please message me. Let me help you play and get the most for your money. And for those of you who are part of my monthly club, which means that you do order every month, your names are automatically going to go into a draw and you're going to earn... I haven't decided whether one person's going to earn the whole bonus product thing or depending on our orders, I might play and we might all get a little treat by the end of February. Because when we put our orders together, we all tend to earn some extra hostess rewards. So if you're part of Monthly Club, by the end of February, you will um, receive something from me, whether that is an entry into the draws for the whole shopping spree, or, um, if I have enough rewards, I might just try to purchase everybody something little from our group. That's just a little thank you for continuously ordering with me. Okay. I know I chatted a lot, but there is a lot to chat about. Okay. So we're going to get crafting. You should have a little brown envelope and I'm gonna grab card number one. Okay. Oh, I guess I need my brochure again. Sorry, keep putting things down. Okay, so card number one is, you're going to kind of look for this green um, cardstock and the white piece, and then you're gonna have some sort of designer paper folded like this. So I'm gonna show you the four cards here and then I'm gonna move this out of your screen so my camera can focus. There we go. You will have one of these four paper patterns, mostly because I loved them all and I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use, so I chose all of them. So this paper package is in the Celebration brochure. This is the Sunny Days paper pack. So I'm using quite a few of these back patterns with the strawberries and the cherries and the flowers. So I'm using a bunch of these and I'm showing you how you can actually make a card just with designer series paper. So when I get designer series paper that I pay for, I tend to hoard it. I don't like chopping it. I like to use every single bit. But when I get stuff for free, I feel a little bit more generous sometimes, and so I'm willing to give someone an entire card made out of designer paper. And you can get three full cards out of one 12 by 12 sheet of DSP. That is short for designer paper. Okay, so let me show you here how to put this card together. I'm going to complement this paper with one of the new bundles in our annual catalog, and that is the Heartfelt Hexagon Bundle. So this guy rings in at 50 something, so it's not quite enough for you to buy this bundle and to get this paper for free. You'd have to buy this bundle and probably add something like, uh, what's lower, like a set of embellishments, or you could get maybe a seal refill would be kind of enough to put you over and then you'd be able to earn this um, paper for free. Okay, so I'm going to set those to the side and let me show you the cards. So here is design number one, sending you lots of love and hugs. Let's eat cake. I just like all these sentiments. Unfortunately, we do need sympathy cards, and I've needed a lot of them lately, with sincere sympathy. And then sending you lots of love and hugs again, because there was a fourth sentiment, the Mr. and Mrs., but I didn't really, 
I like to make my wedding cards really, really fancy. And so I didn't want to do this because this is like, this is nice, but I like to make my wedding cards a lot, a lot nicer. And I don't actually need any wedding cards right now. Okay. So I'm going to try, I don't know if this will help. Okay. If I put these kind of up here, I don't know if the camera will like that. So sorry, I'm going to move those. I'll bring them back later. And I'm going to show you how to assemble this. Okay. So I have this all folded already for you. Um, what if you would like to replicate this, I should actually just give you the measurements, shouldn't I? They should be on the back. Ha, they're on the back of one of these. Okay, here, you guys can take a quick screenshot if you like. Also, I'll throw all of the supply lists and the measurements in the description on the video. And then that way I don't need to um, make you take screenshots of my beautiful, ugly post-its. <laughs> okay, so I will put this in the description on the video. Okay, so this is already folded. But what you do need to do is you need to glue this little flap down flat. Okay, so we're going to take just a little adhesive, double-sided tape or seal, whatever works for you. And just put that inside that little flap. Okay. There we go. And of course, you can use whichever side of the paper you prefer. Now on the inside of our card, that's where you're going to add your card stock. So I've given you the shaded spruce because it was a color that showed up in all four of the, pa the papers that I sent out. So I figured it would be a good option. And then we do want white for people to write on. So we're gonna layer these guys together and then we're going to set this right in the middle here. And then that way you have something to write on but kind of a fancier inside as well. doesn't matter what order you do it. And of course, you are more than welcome to come back later. You can stamp inside here if you want, or you could even add some more designer paper if you wanted to go crazy like that. But for now, this is nice. And it's just a wonderful way to make use of a whole piece of paper. Look, like you've got this gorgeous pattern now on the other side. And it's just a really, really fun card. Now for the front, we're going to make a little tag. So I have punched out just a little white hexagon for you. So you're going to have to use whatever stamp set you have at your house with whatever sentiment you have at your house. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't send you the sentiment already stamped, but I will show you kind of how, um, how I got my sentiments done. So I would have taken a scrap paper, or of course I could easily do it on there too, but I'm going to use pool party for my perimeter. And I grabbed this nice hexagon perimeter, stamped it on some scraps. And then I'm using shaded spruce for the sentiment. And I know sometimes you're like, oh, like a blue and a green together might be a little weird, but it works. It works really nicely on this card. And, um, make this one another. Sending you lots of love and hugs. So you ink that up and then it goes inside your little space. If I can see, it's tricky to see above me. There we go. So this is where the glass mat would come in handy. Lots of people they'll stamp with the glass mat as their surface. And I don't, I haven't tried it to be honest, but they just say they get such a nice clean image. So it's definitely worth trying. Then you'd take your punch and open it. There's that little button. I like to feed mine through so I can see. Some people will turn it over and they'll punch and, you know, like use the front. But I like to actually look through the window, see what I'm doing. And punch. Okay. 
Now, before I add this to my card, I did include for you a little piece of linen thread. So if you're brave and if you want to, just tie a big messy bow and we're going to tuck that in behind this tag to kind of make it come alive a little bit more. So it just, all you need is this big bow and we're going to tape it underneath like this, okay? So double-sided tape to the ground. There we go. And then while it's flipped over, go ahead and add your dimensionals to the back here. And you can put them all around the perimeter for this card. Maybe three or four of them. And then this will get popped up onto your card front. So this kind of card is one that I would encourage you, if you have paper that's just sitting around and it hasn't done anything for a long time, just chop it. Make a bunch of these cards and uh, maybe even drop some of them off here because every month, whatever cards get dropped off, I exchange amongst you guys and you can get ideas from other people. So it's kind of called our card swap. And if you bring cards, I would say, like bring maybe five, and then I will trade them amongst the other people who drop them off in my bin throughout the month. Okay, so kind of a fun idea. There's idea one, there's idea two, three, doesn't like to focus while my arm's there. There we go. And four. So whichever paper pattern you got, you can do whatever you'd like with it. And you're probably going to use um, whatever sentiments you have. But we were able to order this bundle in advance. And I hope that you can see how simple it is to use it in combination basically with any of these papers and probably any of the papers you have hiding in your stash as well. So I'll leave the four here just for one minute while I clean up because I have to keep this all organized. While I grab card number two. Okay. I'm moving this, so hit pause if you're not done. It's the nice thing about recordings. There we go. Okay, so our next card here, this is the one I tried and failed to show my team. Ooh, that's very bright. Um, what is so bright here? What if I offset you? Nope. Yes. Oh, that's better. I think I'm getting glare from the snow outside, but it's pretty. I wanted to see it. Okay, so this is the card that I was also trying to show my team yesterday, and I do a mystery stamping with them. So I send them measurements of papers and designer series um, patterns, and then I tell them they have to pick from their stash and make a card using those pieces. So they don't know what we're making in advance, but this was the card that I did and it's actually the one that I featured on my show me how it's done video today at noon as well not this design but I modified it so don't fall in love with this one it's on my show me how it's done video and I did this on my video at noon so it's the same idea using the same measurements of the paper but just different techniques um, I cut out the bird here just with one of the stylish shapes dies added a sentiment a different way little linen thread so if you head to my youtube channel i do post a new video every tuesday at noon and sometimes i'm live but i've been having a lot of trouble with lives i don't know if it's my laptop not liking the like recording and live streaming at the same time so i've kind of just been recording sometimes and posting them but anyways this video is up you can check it out. But for today, we're going to do this one. 
and you might have like there's a couple different paper patterns in there so I'm just going to choose one from my bin also to go along with this um, this is why I like my weekly videos so beginning of January I made this adorable little lip balm box this was a video on January 2nd and then this was the matching card to go with it that I did this week. So you can always go together and make both of them and have a fun little treat. So both videos are up. You can check them out. And let me get you started on this card. So this paper is hiding in our celebration brochure. Surprise, surprise. It is a freebie with a $60 order and it's called Flight and Airy. Now it does not coordinate with a specific bundle, but I really thought that it worked really nicely with a bundle called Textured Expressions. And I know that's around here somewhere. Give me a second. I will find it. Maybe I will find it. I thought it was so organized this time, but I think, oh, I see it. By textured expressions, I mean thoughtful expressions, okay? So I thought, okay, birds, birds, great. Sentiments, so beautiful. But then for this bundle, these dies were the kicker for me. They are beautiful and I'm a sucker for anything stitched. So all different sizes in that nice like little window kind of look. And then there's also these label ones too, which you did see on the lip balm holder. So this is the bundle that I chose to pair with my sentiment and my um, die set here. So you can see I used one of the dies, and then I chose the sentiment from there. You'll of course have this little white die and you add whatever sentiment you want. Okay, so let's get going. I'm going to move one of these out of the way. They are the same, but a little different. Okay, here we go. Make sure you've got all your pieces out. And let's begin. So here we are once again not using cardstock as the entire base. So we are using it for part of the card, but we're not going to use it basically to make this front panel. Do you see? That's how I'm using the card, um, the designer paper for that purpose. So I would love to say thank you to Jackie Bolthouse because years and years ago she came up with this concept, or at least I think it was her, um, of using designer series paper as your card front. And so I just, you know, used that idea and combined it with this flight and airy paper because it's so pretty and I love it. Okay, here we go. We're going to start with our piece of basic white that's going on the inside of your card. Okay, so opening this guy up, and now we can't see. Is that, that's better. Okay, I don't know why. I just had some glare for a minute. There we go. Lights, things, you know. I don't like the cold, but I do like the big fat snowflakes that are coming down. And we really haven't had that. We've had like cold and tiny snowflakes. But I am a summer person. All right, this guy. So I've got my little section to the left and I've got my big section opened up to the middle. I'm going to put that inside. There we go. Oh, that was very crooked. Hold on. Maybe I didn't press it yet. <laughs> That's why I don't press hard right away. I just put things in place and make sure they're down. See? Okay, let's try this again. Put it in place. Make sure you love it. And then press it in place. There we go. Okay. We're going to play with one of our designer series papers now. So you see you have two strips that are actually the exact same uh, size, but you're going to choose the one that complements your large piece. Okay, 
that's going to be the one that you're putting inside right now because for the front of the card you want something that is the opposite of your paper you don't want to use the same um, piece or maybe you do but I didn't okay so I'm choosing the one that matches my front I'm going to turn that over of course I could use this side too it's beautiful and I could easily decide that you know I'd rather play with those pieces and have this one showing Go and two, put that one in. There, so this piece is going to line up to the right hand side of your white. It should be about the same length, so it should cover completely from the top to the bottom, and then you're just going to work on adding it in place. You do also have this really skinny strip of the blue and if you want it it kind of ties your card together really nicely if you add that on now so glue would be your best bet if you do not own this little suquang 1 8 of an inch tape and I do order this from the states but I, you might be able to get it on Amazon or have some if you need it as well okay One eighth of an inch, and it's really nice. I have tape that skinny. Okay, this one should fit right beside your designer paper. I'll be able to kind of put that into place. See how easy that is? Okay, now we're going to move this out of your view for just a second. You're bringing it back, so don't let it go far. But we're going to bring in the big piece of designer series paper. And I'd like you to choose the side that you want showing in the front. Now, if you have this one, most likely you're choosing the birds or actually this is gorgeous too. So whichever one you would like showing on the front of your card, you're going to leave on your workspace right now. Okay. Then you're going to take some adhesive and put two strips or a little bit on the left hand side of your project. Okay. So right on the edge, I'm going to for sure put one strip and then just over like don't don't go very far I wouldn't go further than an inch or so you do not want any adhesive in the middle of this space okay now we're going to take this backing off but be careful because it's sticky now it's going to want to stick to everything we're going to bring this back down now the easiest way to make sure this gets lined up properly is to line this right on top of the white piece that you've already attached because your white one's not moving and if you rest your designer series paper now right over top of it you're going to know that when you close your card you're not going to see any paper poking out from behind it because we do not have a border on this designer paper. Okay, does that make sense? So once you're happy, once it's in place, then you're gonna just take this left hand piece, fold it down, and press it into place. That will hold the card. We've got beautiful DSP once again. Keep it opening and closing. Okay, so you have one last piece of designer paper. And again, choose whichever side you want showing here and put adhesive on the back side of the other one. goes just on this panel to the left. There we go. 
then you have a couple more jobs to do. So the first one is to choose a sentiment from your stash and you're going to want to stamp that on the little decal that I've sent you. So I'm using boho blue because that was the color that I chose for my paper. But of course, if you don't have boho blue, go ahead and use whatever you have. Um, perhaps a brown would look really nice because that would blend in with the tree branches. So any sort of brown, or you can use like a yellow or a red if you wanted to, um, or the garden green is a color that shows up in here too. So basically I just look on the color package and li the list of colors that show up in the paper and whatever is on there, then I just use that. And if worse comes to worse, black is also fine, okay? So I'm gonna use where in the world would I be without you just because I thought that was a really nice sentiment for a friend. We're gonna put that in the center of my little decal right there. And then my decal, I'm going to pop up using dimensionals. So this guy is resting just right along the left hand side of my project. Uh, maybe over a little bit more. There we go. There. And then what you have is a bird from this paper package. So let me see if I can find a whole sheet of them. So the nice thing about these watercolor birds as they're all so different. So you're gonna all have different birds. Um, and that means your cards are all gonna look different, which is kind of nice. You don't want everybody's card to look the same. Here we go. Here's what the 12 by 12 paper looks like. So I just chopped it up and picked like random birds that I thought were all facing the correct way. And uh, if you would like, you can fussy cut one of these birds out and add it to your card. Now, when you fussy cut, please do not feel like it has to be perfect. In fact, we don't want to go right up against the bird. You wanna leave a little white border kind of around the edge of the body and it just kind of makes it come to life a bit. So there are no dies for this one, I'm sorry, but hopefully one bird, hopefully you will forgive me especially when you see the amount of leaves and flowers and stuff that I cut out for you for project number three. I hope you're gonna forgive me for this small cutting job. There we go. This guy can get popped up on dimensionals as well. Surprise, surprise, right? I know, I'm trying to surprise you guys. Here we go. There's my bird. So now I will be fully honest, when I designed this card, this is how I designed it. Um, I didn't have anything else planned. But as I was doing the video yesterday, I realized I had these gorgeous tinsel uh, foil gems that I had gotten from the new catalog. And so I did use them on my sample with my team. So they are not in your kit. I will be fully honest about that because they weren't part of my original design. But if you have any sort of rhinestones, any sort of gems, you can, if you'd like, go ahead and just add a few to the card. And it does, it does add, you know, a lot to it. So if you have any, um, just they don't have to match mine, but you can go ahead and add them to the project. But if not, then it's adorable and fun. And then you can check out my video from noon today and see how you can add just some linen thread to the side, or you could even use the paper itself instead of a sentiment stamp to, um, to kind of add more birds to the project too. And then here's one other idea. Just so you have all the ideas.
there. So just hit pause again if you haven't uh, finished, because of course we don't want to move on without you. We're going to clean up. And we're going to move on to the last card. Okay, this one's probably my favorite. I hope you love it. You do have to like, you have to like cutesy things if, if you're okay with that. I realize not everyone likes cutesy things or needs cutesy things, but hopefully you have somebody in your life who will appreciate, oh, let me take this out of the package. Who will appreciate this card? There we go. So this card is also really shiny. Look how shiny that is. Okay, there we go. So cute. So this one here, I was inspired. My kids have been listening to the song, Never Smile at a Crocodile. So when I saw the crocodile, I was like, oh yeah, I guess I need to use that. This is from the Jungle Pals um, bundle. So I used the stamp sets and then the dies to cut out. There is a tree die as well um, to cut out all of the pieces for my card here. So you guys have all the grasses and leaves and stuff, and then you can kind of add whatever other details you want to your cards. And that, as I showed you in here, was that two part option where you could get a stamp for 60, the dies for 120, and, uh, and then of course you'd have all of them, which is really fun. My sister-in-law also likes sloths and her birthday's in February, so I might have to make something for her then. And this guy just reminds me of like the Fruit Loops Toucan Sam. So lots, lots of fun potential here. All right, your last envelope here. There we go. Oh, and if we're wondering about the paper, this is also from that Sunny Days package, you know, where we use the strawberries and cherries and all of that. And the weird thing about this page, I wish I had a full one to show you, but imagine with me a 12 by 12 page with the top that's all clouds, like all clouds. There's about, I think, eight inches of that or seven. And then you can start to see the bottom is raindrops. So um, these are the only strips that I have left, see, from this entire package after prepping for that. Look at that, the raindrops go right there and then all the clouds are above. So I forgot to say, I have an event in January. We have bingo still, okay? So on January 23rd, I am doing surprise prize bingo with all the prizes from the new mini catalog. You can either come to my house and play live or you can uh, come pick up a kit or I, I would need to mail you a kit like really quickly and you'll get to do a couple make and takes and we are going to play 10 rounds of bingo with prizes all from that catalog. You also do get a little treat for attending um, or taking a kit. So the class is $45 and it includes all of that. Your make and takes, the 10 rounds of bingo. So if you want a spot, please let me know. The more people I have registering, the better the prizes get because my prize pool gets bigger and I have more money to spend on the prizes, okay? So just a little caveat between club that card and my make and take. This is all I have left from two full packages of that sunny days paper. And this is like enough. I feel like I can make like a mini card with this. So I haven't decided yet what to do. Okay, let's get building here. Move all your little pieces out of your way. Let's get the main card built here, okay? So I've got my card base opening towards the left, okay? So on the inside of my card here, I am going to put a piece of shaded spruce right in that space and a piece of basic white in that space, okay? That's gonna be what I have to write on and 
if you own this stamp set, then of course you could also add a little sloth hiding up in the corner if you'd like. Because it is cute. Come back, come back. There we go. In this large section, All right? So we are not putting anything on the left hand side here on the inside, but on the front part, there is a beautifully embossed piece of shaded spruce. And this I used that new embossing folder. It was one of those, that pairing of the embossing folder and the stamp for 120. It's called Simply Sophisticated. Look how fun it is. You can use the front or you can use the back. They're both really cool patterns. So whichever one you'd like, you can put this Oh, this is too big. <laughs> you might all have too big of pieces. Hold on here. Need to trim this down. Give me a second. Come here, trimmer. If you need to cut it, because I might have given you too much. Let's do this. Oh, well, better too much than too little. If you're all looking at me saying like, Lauren, this is so tiny. Okay, this piece is two and a half. So I need two and a half. Okay, trim this piece to two and a half and then it should fit right in there. Oops, now you have a piece for the inside, I guess, if you wanted it, you could put it like right here. That would be fun. That's up to you. I'm not going to do that. Okay, here we go. Two and a half. I apologize. Now I'm going to put this base aside for a moment. I'd like to kind of concentrate on my other pieces for now. Oh, you know what happened? <laughs> You're missing a piece. That's why. That piece was correct, but it was not supposed to be embossed. That piece was supposed to go in back here. <laughs> oh, Lauren, 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 Lauren. See, it was supposed to go nicely around this thing here. Okay, so go ahead and trim this piece down to what I told you to, because you will want the piece that's embossed. Then, if you have shaded spruce, please go grab it. We need to cut you another piece. If you do not have shaded spruce in your collection, please message me right away and I will get your missing piece mailed off to you, okay? But if you have shaded spruce, I would love you dearly. If you can grab yourself a, um, a piece, we're going to cut it. Let me cut mine first, just to make sure. I shouldn't do things when I'm tired. Three and one eighth by four and one eighth. Oh, I thought I was doing so well. Here we go. Okay, there we go. So oh, try. Uh, let me try this. Four and one eighth. 
eighths by three and one eighth. Let's just confirm that this fits before you all do it. That's good. And that's good. Okay, so with your shaded spruce, if you could please cut yourself a piece that is four and one eighths by three and one eighths. That would be great. I'll give you a minute. While you're cutting, I need more tape. You can go ahead and attach these three pieces together now if you have those cut and if you don't then um, you can still build your scene on this one here just maybe wait till I send you that shaded spruce to to do the back Also, by the way, Happy New Year to all of you. Hope you've had a great holiday. I had overall, like, I had a good holiday, but it was super busy. Uh, my mom went in for emergency hernia surgery on Christmas Day. So I think, like, everyone else had a really good Christmas besides her and I, because we were up all night in Emerge on Christmas Eve didn't see Santa. And then, of course, by Christmas Day, she was having surgery. And then we were, she wasn't, her oxygen wasn't wanting to come up. So we stayed overnight. But I did pop back to the house. Um, I swapped out with my sister so that I could go and open presents with the kids. And then I stayed in Calgary and uh, flew home later than I was planning to. But I'm glad to report she is doing well. We've kind of joked, we're like, I think you're getting the hang of this surgery recovery because she just had surgery in July. So hopefully she stops. I don't think she wants to visit there anymore. Okay, here we go. We have our adorable little setup here. And now I'm gonna show you guys, I just wanted to show you how I cut my tree branch, but of course your tree branch is cut for you. Um, but I wanted to show you how you would do this because this is a nice big tree, but you don't need to waste that much. So I just took a piece of cardstock that is about three, three and a half inches tall. And then I just cut it about two and a half inches wide. You're going to line your tree trunk not right to the edge because you do want to get a little bit of space here. If you lined it to the edge, that last kind of riffle in your trunk would end up going just to the edge and it looks kind of awkward. So you're going to line this up right to the edge of your project like this, and then you're going to roll it through your cut and emboss machine. Okay, so you can see a tiny bit there. And then I've got my branches. And of course you could choose whichever branches you wanted to show. I wanted this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that just on the ground here. will give me this 
kind of branch. Now this is a little too tall for my paper here and I probably could have just um, waited and attached this later but I found depending on where you cut your trunk you might want to move this up or down okay so I'm gonna just find where I'm happy with this kind of like that and then I'm gonna just go to my trimmer and cut a tiny bit off the top and bottom you'll want it to be three inches at the end okay so from the top here cut a little bit and then I do need to line this up to three inches make sure that's exactly correct and I've got this to go now you'll notice there's a second branch here that kind of looks awkward you don't really need it so it can hide behind your little bush depending on how you do this or you can also just kind of cut it off okay so if you cut it off then it's not going to be in your way it's not going to look awkward and you can now put some tape on the back of your tree trunk and get this on the card All right, and then from here, I'm going to get this mounted onto my card base before I start decorating, okay? So I need this to attach to this loose panel. I don't want any adhesive underneath this right side because that would close my card and it would mean that I can't open and close like I want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put some dimensionals under the side that has the tree. Okay, so that's why I put my tree on first. It's just a good reminder for me that, okay, the side that has the tree, I'm going to put just a few dimensionals on, kind of covering not even half of it, just like a third. If you're worried about going too far, you can also put your dimensionals straight on the green if that's easier for you, okay? Then we're going to centralize this, give it kind of a nice white border on the top, bottom, and the right hand side. And put that in place. Okay, so then you'll have all of these fun little pieces and you can decorate however you want. You could put, um, I kind of put my grass down here at the bottom of the tree. You can put a couple flowers on the bush if you want. You can put these guys hanging off the tree or kind of loose, whatever you'd like. So that's an option if you don't have the um, crocodile and the sloth. If you do have those guys, like you have the bundle, then you can do a little bit of coloring if you want. So I don't know if you want to watch me color, but um, I can show you, I'll show you one. So if I do the crocodile, I chose the granny apple green light and dark marker. So I'm gonna start with my dark and I'm gonna add some shadowing kind of just in this little scales everywhere that Stampin' Up! has color. I'm going to start and then I'm also going to just add a little to his belly. I don't know if this is just what I did for mine. And I thought it gave a good shade look. Okay, so that's all the dark. Then I'm gonna take my light blend and I'm gonna color over the entire crocodile, probably apart from 
like his teeth. I tried to leave those white as much as possible. I use the this one here. So coloring over all the light and the dark spots. You can go even right over where you've already colored. What I like about the blends is they just, they soak in here so nicely. I can come back and add a little bit of color shading if I need to. There's my crocodile. So I just kind of popped him up on dimensionals and put the little branches behind because I thought it looked cute. And then the flowers as well. And um, I'm just gonna let you guys know, I did for my sample, the added little flower center centers. These are from the Rain or Shine suite. And as you can imagine, if I sent these in your little envelopes, they were most likely just gonna get lost. Um, they were gonna fall out because they're not stuck to an adhesive back. And so I decided not to send them. Um, this was an add-on that I'm going to just say, if you own these, then go ahead and add them as a little embellishment. If you don't own them, then don't stress about it, okay? My sloth, once I had him colored, I popped him up on dimensionals. The colors that I used to color the sloth, and of course you can do different. I used ivory and light and dark crumb cake. So ivory is his face, then the light and dark crumb cake. And then when I got to my sentiment, this was the only dye that's not actually in the Jungle Pals little set. This is a full banner die from the Stylish Shapes dies. And I just cut these in half. So I used half for one card and half for the other. And I used a sentiment. Oh, did I not write that down? I used a sentiment from somewhere else because this guy doesn't have sentiments. <laughs> okay, while you guys are coloring, let me look around. Oh, here we go. It's from Darling Details. This one, hello there, is what I chose to use. But of course, use anything you like. I used black as my ink for that because I was using black for the ink on my crocodile and my sloth, but you can do whatever you want, okay? So I'm just gonna say decorate as you will for the rest of the card. Um, I popped this little guy up on dimensionals after I stamped it, popped my sloth up on dimensionals so he looked like he was hanging from the tree. And then the rest of these, um, I just kind of layered one on top of another so that they kind of made the rest of the scene come alive. And I really like the clouds from that Sunny Days designer paper in the background. So there you go. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed these projects. I had so much fun designing them and I have more projects that I'm excited for to share at my bingo event on the 23rd. So again, um, that's a Tuesday, I believe. If you can come, maybe let me know right away. And if you have any questions about any of the projects or if you do not own any shaded spruce, please message me so that I can get that piece to you. And I, I do apologize. Um, I thought I was so prepared, but that's okay. Things happen. And I will talk to you guys soon. I hope that you're um, staying warm and let me know if you'd like a kit for February Club because of course that is the second Tuesday and Wednesday of February and you'll have lots of fun projects to do then too. Bye.